<laughs> it's a Honda. <laughs> what a lot of work. Yeah. <clears throat> so then that was the beginning of the store? No. No. He, he, a few years later. <laughs> he worked um, He worked out, out of the cannery and worked in the cannery and then he Which cannery Jim, did you work at? Girl? For Jim Ford. Oh, oh, for the, oh, Jim. Same yeah, I helped build the uh, Ponchehalas. Where's yeah. Poitia Halas? Which is now Trident. Trident Seafood. Oh. Trident mm -hmm. North. Trident yeah. North. Yeah. 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 Louis, Louis Albers and, <coughs> and um, Cliff Albers and Louis Barnes. Louis Barnes. Oh. Yeah. yeah right. they, they were all they were. all welders. Yeah. Needed welders at that time. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what happened. I. Well, Bob Cunningham gave me a job to start out with, because he told me, he said, well, I met him on the, on the ferry coming over here, and uh, he said that uh, we'll take him. He said, I can keep you busy, so I told him, well, as long as I'm working, I said, I'm feeding my family, so he said, I can just put a notice in the paper, and he said, I get keep you busy, you know, did a lot of work, so I didn't, I guess he, a lot of people didn't, didn't like him too well, I don't know where he cheated somebody or what, I don't know, but it didn't get as many workers that I thought I would, and so he said he'd pay me every day, and uh, so I'd put in my day, some days I'd make five dollars, and some days I'd make ten or fifteen, or, 20 or whatever, and so whatever I made that day, I'd take it home, give it to her. She'd go up to the store and buy what groceries she could, and then we'd do the same thing the next day. And then, uh, what the heck was that construction? Uh, yeah, M anyway, M and K, K came in. And M and K come there. Free. Renewing. Repairing the road from there, yeah. from the airport in. And they tore down a lot of houses up on the bank, like where. Um, <laughs> where the post office is. It's no. Stink. Yeah, that's where the that's where the canneries were all at. Right where the crossroad from the post office. Is that building that? Uh, New building that's in there where uh, Trident North, uh, South is. Oh, right. Uh, the, the one with the big, long, sleeping. That's the Coast Guard building. Oh, is that right? Before yeah. it was even, uh, what is that, the one that I remember? I mean, it was before the co op, was before it was Whitney. Oh. Right? Yeah. Whitney Fidalgo. Whitney Fidalgo was there. And so before that, it was. Yeah, the, it was the Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Wow. You see, that's you go cool. down, you had to go down C Street clear over the hill down past Reluctant, and, uh, and then there was piling from there, clear on over to... That's right, we filled all that with dirt, haven't yeah. we? Mm-hmm. Wow, that, even where your, where your shop is now. It's, well, that's all new fill. That's, that's new, new that's fill. all new fill. That, that yeah. one in at 64, six, yeah, Amazing. 64. Amazing. Do you know what shop theirs is? Cordova Outboard? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, you own, also, you own Cordova Outdoors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, uh, that building and then the Anchor Bar were the two that they owned the land. Uh, Johnny French got that because he was out on the dock when the earthquake happened and he lost his building and so they gave him permission to buy that land. Amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, so because the rest of it, like Ed Maxwell, he leased his land oh. until he got on council and then he bought it. <laughs> so politics matter. Oh, oh politics yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> because he passed a he passed a law that after you're there for a certain length of time, well, you can buy it and you get half of your your lease back. So let me ask you this, Pat. <clears throat> Were you on council the same time Ed w Maxwell was? Mm -hmm. That was a nice bullet to dodge. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I said I didn't go along with an agenda where most people do. Yeah, you were very good on council. You were there for at least one term that I know of. Two one term and then the, the fisherman. Oh, yeah. Blackball. Yeah. I, you know, they, they think that that's a paid seat. Yeah. You just <laughs> do it. My first meeting, we didn't get home till three o'clock in the morning. Oh my God. I said, I need a note to go home. <laughs> I really was here till then. Plus, plus I have to work in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, so we, we, from then on, we had to be out of there by 11. Yeah. My yeah. first council meeting went till 11. Yeah. That's long enough. Yeah. After you've been in school all day. Yeah. yeah. Was it a mandatory ending at 11? Yeah. But yeah, it, it has to. They were not done. Yeah. They were getting heated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by that time, you're not really thinking well either. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. make good decisions for the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a question. How did Louise Barnes get shot? On his boat? Like? His deck hand. Can you tell us that story? He can tell you What's that? how Louie got shot. Is that Gary and Steve's yeah. dad? They watched mm -hmm. that. How long they ago is it. this? 66? Uh, no. 67? 67 or 68, something long in there. Yeah. Was. Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, Louie, I fished with him for in 66. I fished with him. And uh, we went through the Reds, and then it, and then I went on the boat. We went over Saney mm -hmm. there that year. We had uh, five weeks of Saney that year, so we fished for four. Come to town, and the uh, skipper we hired, the, say we, but Louis done it, and he's said if he'd go back out, he was going to kill me because I didn't know what I was doing and I was way too slow. And uh, he was he was a native guy and of course he knew all the sound and all that sort of stuff. So that was, he figured it might, Thank be, you, Rob. might be better if we hired a skipper because we had three guys on the boat and the, the uh, Louis was the one that owned the boat, and I was the deckhand, so he hired a skipper, see, so the skipper's not going to do anything. Yeah. And Louis owned the boat, and he didn't want to do anything. So I was, <laughs> I was the dirty one, you know. Yeah. I'd get up at four in the morning and, and fish all day, and then I'd get to bed maybe midnight or one o'clock in the morning by the time you pitched all the fish off, because he had to pitch them off in those days. And so that was that was a hard problem. So we fished there, and then uh, after Louis built his built his boat, well, uh, that was must have been sixty. That must have been up in sixty nine or seventy something like that when he got shot. I'm not not positive of that. Well, may have to because go. it was on his new boat. Yeah, yeah. It's on his new boat. Gary was 18. So when, when that happened. Was it accidental or did they do No, it? he no. purposely shot him. Wow. Yeah. Who shot Louie? The deckhand. The deckhand. What did you He was, uh, I don't know, he, he uh, got a job with Louie. Louie was the type of guy that would try and help anybody, you know, if he was in problems or anything like that so this guy didn't have any money or no place to live or anything like that so Louis well, said well he'd try him out and let him you know work with him for a while and so when they were fishing whoever got into the anchorage at, at night first the other guy come in and, and tie up to him see where Louis got in there that's the one he went into Green Island, I think it was. And uh, whoever got in there first dropped the anchor and then the next guy would come in and tie right along. And 
Cliffs told him, he said, you've got to get rid of that guy because he never sleeps. He just sits, sits at the table just staring at the wall on the other mm -hmm. side. And, uh, well, Louis says, yeah, he's, uh, he's got a little problem, but we're working on it. You know, he'd be, per he'd be all right. Well, it wasn't long after that that finally Louis decided that he was going to lay him off and when he brought this load of crabs in. So evidently the guy got wind of it that he's going to get fired. So he, he went to work that morning with a rifle. Oh. And uh, they come around the co Coast Guard boat, come up, just coming up towards the cannery. And he shot the other deckhand right right alongside of the the uh, Coast Guard boat. And then he, he, I don't know how, he didn't shoot him too awful bad evidently because he was trying to get up so he shot him again. And then he was shooting up at Louie in the, in the boat. And I was in the, the cannery right there and I heard the shooting going on. Now what in the heck is, who's shooting around here, you know? So I got up to the table and I went to the window back there and I watched him and he ducked in underneath the dashboard of the flying bridge there. And uh, he walked around the side of the boat where the ladder was and climbed the ladder and walked across over to the door. And I see Louis got up out from underneath there, come up to him and they were far as I'm hearing of you from standing there for a split second or two, and boom, Louis just passed, fell right over backwards. And then the guy went over, crawled on the, got on the ladder and went down, and went around the cabin and in the door, and that's the last I seen him. And so the boat drifted right around there for a little bit, and then it finally went out, and then took off down the bay. And, uh, so he, uh, they wanted different, the Coast Guard even wanted, <laughs> wanted that. That was uh, Joe Cook. He was mm -hmm. tied up to, at the cannery there. And he was ready to leave. The Coast Guard come over and wanted him to go after the boat. And Louis says, that's your job, it ain't mine. <laughs> that guy's aboard there with a rifle. He said, I think it's, uh, it wasn't Louis. No, Joe, Joe oh, Cook. Joe, Joe Cook, Cook, yeah. And he said, that, that was your job, not his, to, to do that. So they argued back and forth, and finally the Coast Guard said that, well, you take your boat and take us up there, and we'll, we'll climb aboard. So evidently, they went up there and tied on to it, and uh, they went to board, and, this guy was laying on the floor in the, by the kitchen area. And what he'd done, he's took that gun right up to his oh. chin like that and pulled the trigger. The guy that shot yeah. everybody, he shot himself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but he lived. But the only... Yeah, he lived. The he's only a, reason he lived, <laughs> he had a metal plate on the roof of his mouth for his oh. teeth. He had a set of false teeth up there. Oh my gosh. And that bullet hit that metal and sheared it out like this. And uh, so it blew everything from here, oh. from his eyes, just like that. Blow all of that off, mm. just like this. Mm. Oh my God. Did he so, live for a long time? Yeah, it was quite a while. Cause after and they couldn't persecute him. Prosecute. prosecute him because there wasn't enough evidence. Wait, oh my yeah. God. What? Oh, yes, that's what himself? they said. Yeah. So he never went to jail or anything? Oh my God. He, but he paid for witness? basically no. what he did. Uh, I mean, he had to live with that. Gary, live Gary town? met him in a hospital mm -hmm. in Seattle. Did he live in town here? And no, uh, he first town. thing he wanted to do was strangle him. You know? <laughs> I bet. And so then he, he went. Gary Barnes? Yeah. Then he went back and, and he got to talk to him afterwards. And uh, so. Uh, the guy, what they done, they made him a whole new jaw, a new bunch of teeth and mouth and everything like that. But he, Gary said his mouth was real small, like 
about so big. He could only tell small lies. <laughs> yeah, right. So, but uh, he died. I don't know. It was a few, it's two or three years after uh, Gary got to talk to him. Uh, Probably died of remorse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What happened to the other guy that had been Ask shot twice? They all Building died. He died. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. My gosh. Yeah. I, I think that's the worst tragedy that we've had. Wow. Since we've been here. Well, they had a couple of teenagers. And then yeah, what did Louis, or what did Cliff name his son? Louis, he was, well, that was, he was named after Louis, uh, Louis Martin. Yeah, yeah, that's why I thought that was always yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if it's not too painful, like, can you, how long after he got shot did Louis die? Not, not too long. No, five long. or six years, I would say. No, somewhere. Louis. Oh, Louis? After he got shot. He was, he died right away. Oh, uh, right, right away. On the boat. On the boat. On the yeah, boat. because, yeah. see, they shot him and hit him right in here. Mm. And uh, when they, he had a pair of those uh, insulated coveralls on. Yeah. And when they got him in the hospital in there, they took the coveralls off of him. And the bullet fell on the floor. Oh, so it pushed that in. So it just went, just barely went through him, and that was it. And I told the, I had to make a statement to the police department when, they, you know, after it was all said and done. And uh, I told him, I, one thing I couldn't figure out, and that was, how come that bullet didn't go any farther than it did? And he's, well, didn't have enough time to get up any speed, <laughs> which is not right because it, that slug comes out of the end of the barrel at 600 and some thousand it, it feet per second. It loses speed instead of gain mm -hmm. speed. Yeah. Right. yeah. But he said that, he said that his whole insides are nothing but jelly. Oh, it just slowed it down. That mm -hmm. impact, you know, mm -hmm. he said it was. But, mm. And then who took the boys? Like, Wanda. His mother. Wanda? Yeah. Yeah, his, their mom. Their mom. The, the good thing was that Louie wanted Wanda to go to the boat with him. And she didn't. And they would have been left orphans if she had yeah. gone down there. I, I fully yeah. believe that. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. and then the people in town have said that uh, Louis was the one, it's all his fault because he got killed because he, he was going to fire him. See? And so he's going to lose his job and he just, but he was, he was pretty, pretty much on the drugs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think mental was, yeah. Yeah, was the way you would describe the man. It sounds like it when he was sitting and mm -hmm. just looking yeah. off the Just wow. stared, stared at the wall. And all. the deckhand also died? Yeah. 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 Wow. Oh my God, that is a tragedy. That is. Yeah. <clears throat> but if you saw it happen, why weren't you a legitimate witness? So that that would be enough evidence. Yeah. yeah well, you'd so think so. I, I don't know why they didn't, but, but that's uh, what they said. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. BNC shot himself like he did, and it turned out like he did. I think they figured that was probably a penalty enough. Well, you don't want him out <laughs> loose, though. <laughs> well, he was. He well, was so he wasn't bad. loose much because of all the damage he did to himself. He, he like he was in the hospital for yeah. Yeah, a year he never, or some whole bunch. I think he was in the hospital most all the time yeah. mm -hmm. because he had multiple operations. Because yeah. they had to redo the jaw and, and uh, Man. you know, and all that and sort of stuff. I know that story. So on a lighter note, uh, what has been your most extraordinary experience? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Or just one of them. <laughs> yeah, that one was pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, actually, I can't really think. To me, it's pretty much normal. I presume, uh, you know, the way I would call it. And just every day, going to work and going back home. Stuff like that. I'd say being yeah. able to get the outboard shop. Yeah. Because it was because of another person <coughs> that saw what Carl could do. 
helped us do that because we didn't have money to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the Lord provides. Yeah. 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 yeah, this uh real estate guy from Fairbanks. He uh he had a place out at uh, the boatyard. And uh he I was out there one one night working on his boat, got pulled the lower unit off and was storing it and he told me, he said, You need to to buy Johnny French out, you know. I said, well, <laughs> not me. I said, I, you know, I don't even have the kind of money that it takes, you know, to do that. I really couldn't even hardly pay attention, you know. <laughs> he wanted, well, 400,000, I think he wanted down. No, but it was a lot. For a down payment. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I'll tell you. He said, if I can get Johnny French to sign a paper to, for you to, to buy it, or you just for me to sell it for him, he said, you got a business. He said, you can move in. What? I said, no way. You know, I said, <laughs> I've seen the figures and you couldn't, no way in the world I could do that. So uh, this was in the fall, about, I don't know, it first of December, I think it was, or November, he called me up, and he says, uh, when do you want to move into your, your business? Gotta love a guy like that. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a guy from Fairbanks to shake you off your center. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. What year was that? When you guys did that? No, we moved in in 1980. Yeah, yeah, 1980. And so, in fact, I moved in in 1980, and Bill and Carl went to Seattle. <laughs> Go get a mom. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, but uh, but I uh, he he want to know when I wanted to move in. I said, well, I don't have, I don't own the place. You know, I can't do that. He said, yeah. He says, I got all the papers all made out, and he says I'll be down there. To, now I just want to know when you wanted to move in. And I said, well, if I'm going to do that, it'd probably be the first of the year. God, love it. And. Well, he said, I don't know where we can get it all done in that length of time, but he says, we'll do what we can. And I think we moved in on, what, 15th? Or? The 1st of January. Mm -hmm. It was the 2nd, because you, you were, were on there. vacation. Oh. Yeah, no, he went down to see the those who supplied the... Okay. The, yeah, we had the, to go down. They did that, and, uh, and to make sure that we could... <laughs> purchased the merchandise mm -hmm. just like Johnny did. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what he and Bill did. But I didn't know anything. And Herb Jensen walked in and he says, what are you doing here? And I said, I guess I belong here. <laughs> I guess I own the place. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was a new experience. Yeah, yeah, well, that and was... And that's on a lighter note. <laughs> that's quite a channel challenge, you know, jumping into something like that. I didn't even know where all the parts was at. Didn't what know. would you say to these young girls today, these young people, young men, young women, yeah. what would you say about jumping in a little bit over your head? Would you do it again? I have a knot in my stomach like this. I never owed so much money in my life. <laughs> but it worked out okay, or what? It, it, it worked yeah. Fine. I mean, to me, that's I, that's we when you really told, grow. Yeah. We were told that we wouldn't eat if we bought it. Did you ever eat? Yeah, Johnny. Did you know I look like I went without very <laughs> many meals? <laughs> <laughs> your beauty is shown through your eating. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Yeah. No, that actually that's what the banker said because we needed a little. It bit was that money. tight. Yeah. yeah. He, he says you won't eat. No. <laughs> I walked in. I was asking Johnny Wheeler. He was a. He yeah, was he a, was a bank manager. He was a bank manager in the First National at that time, and uh, so we went in and talked to him. And all he had to have the figures, you know, what this and that was, and so. I went in later, and he had paper all around his desk, this little ticker tape. It was miles though that he had out, and he, he had taken and uh, checked it. 
and uh, he says, I run this, run all the figures, you know, from the time for what you owe. And then he said, you're not even going to eat. Because, <laughs> you know, because all these what figures. A, what a motivational speaker that guy was. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, oh. but this guy from Fairbanks, he, uh, he had the paper out. We had, I think, four or five different contracts on it mm-hmm. that we had to sign up to you. He said, well, how much money you got? And I said, I don't have that any money, <laughs> you know, really. <laughs> and he, well, how much can you dig up? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, I might, might be able to dig up 20,000. Well, he wanted 50, I think it was, for a down payment. Well, he said, I'll give you the other 30000 so, Gotta love a guy like that. So I had another contract with him. <laughs> and so we, we, we just, going to break your knees. We just moved in. Pat, how long did it take for the knot to go away? Oh, it, it was long at time. least the first year because <laughs> every time you had to make a payment, you know, you had to have the money there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, it, it it paid for itself. Yeah, it did. Well, yeah. Is, how many times have you bought a boat? She she still got a knot in her stomach. <laughs> I she give her a knot she every wants year. To know how long <laughs> is it? you build the house? That's gonna leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hang tough, baby. It'll be okay. We, we can go another year without eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we got this one bill from Honda, and it. it it was over a thousand dollars for advertising and we didn't have that kind of money and i just had a fit and carl says if they sent that much advertising up it would be a truckload (laughs) don't worry about it that was his fit just don't worry about it don't worry and the kids say, well, if you want to get a response, just tell mom. Because <laughs> yeah. he doesn't get shook. <laughs> but I paid the bills. <laughs> yeah. And I that think every, every wife that does that has oh, yeah. the same problem. <laughs> yeah. And somehow, Debbie, it comes in. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord provides. Yeah. So how does the word old make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I don't feel, really, I don't feel old. It's just little times you can't quite get out of bed like you as fast as you used to. <laughs> 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 or you can't get out of a chair near yeah. neither one. So, well, I think but, it's, it's your physical limitations mm-hmm. yeah. that... Uh, what you think you could do, <coughs> do it while you're young. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do that. Yeah, do it because while you're young. Because your body times, gets to the what place are where it is. Well, I'm uh, 89 right now. Okay. Yeah. That's it. I'm 81. Okay. I'm just a young <laughs> no. You are. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, our whole project is about generation connection and kind of connecting the youth to the older generation. Uh, do you see, like in Cordova, do you see a large need for that? And if so, how can we work to make it not so large and really kind of connect with our older uh, demographic? I don't know. I've, I've enjoyed my grandkids that grew up here because we became a part of their lives when they had activities and stuff. And oftentimes I would feel bad because not all families do that. And what Michelle would do is she would let me know if they were going to have something that the grandkids were going to. Ball game or something like that. And we could choose whether we wanted to go or not. And that's... So you you become a part of that generation anyway, and, and we've enjoyed it. And there's been others that have had kids. Uh, some of them are gone now, mm-hmm. 
but they'd show up at all the games because it was important to them and they didn't even have kids playing. Mm -hmm. But they liked it. Yeah. And that was uh, Pastor Tom when he was here. He was always at the games mm -hmm. and supporting the younger generation that way. Well, and I, I think that Cordova does more. The other thing is if you go, <clears throat> most of the adults will stay throughout where I've heard in some areas, if they go, they go and watch their kids play, and then oh. when they aren't playing, then they go mm. home. Well, that doesn't support the rest of them either. Yeah. <laughs> so it, 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 it's mm -hmm. been neat to, to uh, watch our kids grow up here. Mm -hmm. Well, it yeah. seems like you get to know the whole group of them that way, all, yeah. the, all the yeah. players and... Yeah. Then well, you see, recognize right, them around town. Right so, now, yeah. most all the kids in school, I, we don't know any of them, you know. I'm Olivia. Very, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is Anika, that's yeah. Faith, and this is yeah. Rhea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would love to get you know, to know you more. We're going to have some events coming up, and we're definitely going to invite you. Oh, no, 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 we're going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah. anyway, that think about if there's some of the seniors that you know that you could include them. Yeah. Say, I'd like to have you come. Well, we're going to do our grandma's Christmas dinner with more kids this year yeah. at school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know the, the Girl Scout one. And the, well, see, that's, and that's one thing that I have never have participated much in the kids. The grandma's so. Christmas dinner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I, I've been working all, you know. Christmas dinner. Yeah. I've you know, worked you all my life, you know. So, mm -hmm. and... I was not, not a short hours neither. I was daylight till dark, and sometimes yeah. after dark. Yeah. When I was working at the cannery, well, some days on that I worked for three days straight without even going to getting uh, any sleep at all. You know, because about the time I got ready to go home, something would blow up in the cannery, and I'd have to maybe I get get to go home to eat supper or something like that and I get right back there and get into it you know to repair it and fix it back up so to, so it'd be running the next morning how many years did you work in the cannery ah, through the 70s yeah what's that through through, through the, the 70s, 70s yeah, yeah. Did, then, do you notice i mean was it a lot of um college kids that used to come up and work in the canneries compared like now they so, they hire well, they from like most, Mexico and yeah, Africa and Mexico, Eastern Bloc. Filipinos a lot stuff. of them did. That, that's yeah. where Tammy came up. Tammy. Uh, Kaland, well, she was Kalandra. 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 Yeah. Kalandra now. She was Miller when she came up. Uh, Michelle, that's why Michelle came up. Yeah, I worked in the she camera worked with, with Michelle. Can. Yeah. Did yeah. you really? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. No, no Michelle. Michelle. Oh, you're Michelle. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, we had another girl and they just tell their friends you know to come up and and when they work long hours it would spend money and help with the college so that's kind of a big change to me because when I first got here it seemed like there was a lot more college kids that came up yeah, and, right. there, there, and there was there isn't now uh -uh. Yeah. and for whatever reason I know one year the they didn't have the hours, so they didn't really, uh, couldn't make that much money. Because mm -hmm. my daughter, our daughter worked at the Camry. Yeah. That, her senior year. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, I started in, in uh, the fall of 66, I started working in the Camry. And uh, I worked in gym four or five years, and then I, quit and went into construction. I worked for Sandstrom for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I went back in. I was doing repair work on New England cannery in the wintertime and different things like that. And finally ended up, I worked on it for Jim Poor after he, after he built that other new cannery, you know, next to uh, Trident there. 
Ocean Beauty, or the Ocean Beauty, Ocean yeah. Beauty. And he built that. We'll see. I worked for him when he had the ferry, when he was canning on the ferry. Uh -huh. And uh, I started work on that. And then that was in, I think I worked with him a year in that. So they canned on the ferry? Yeah. He, he bought a ferry because he, he couldn't build. He made an agreement that he wouldn't build another Camry. But oh, really? he sold the Camry. Yeah. So he when bought he a ferry and did it that way. <laughs> did he just like get the fish right off the boats and then just can yeah. it right yeah. on his Yeah, it was on the inside of the dock, the uh, tea dock there. Oh. Right Down next to the ocean beauty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he turned around and bought that area. And then he built a cannery then in there. And then he sold the ferry. And then he but moved to, uh, to uh, Valdez. Yeah. His last two years. They, uh, he was a builder. Uh -huh. The spring, yeah, that one spring while I was, he told me, he said, well, you go to work on a, you know, the fisherman's boat uh -huh. and just give him the bill and he would pay pay me and then he'd take the money out of the fisherman when they bring the fish in, see. And that's the way it started, the way I was started in the <coughs> harbor that way. And then so long and was coming on the close to fishing time. He come over to me and he says, "Say, hey, he said, uh, uh, are you going to get my cannery going, or do I have to get somebody out of Seattle?" And I said, "Well, Jim, I said I guess you may have to get somebody out of Seattle because I said I'm booked up for two solid weeks at that time." Mm -hmm. And so he, okay, fine, that's good, and that's the last he said anything about it. And he went and ordered the guys from from uh, Seattle to come up and put his cannery back together. And, and that was cannery. Sandy Poor's dad. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was a school teacher. Yeah. yeah. And Sandy and Marlene both grew up, went to school here, went to college, and came back and taught. Marlene Moffat. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Last question. In fifty words or less from each of you, like each of you gets fifty oh. words. Can you tell me what Cordova has done to impact your life? What Cordova has done? Well, <laughs> I don't think you can put it in 50 words. <laughs> Carl, this is one of those times when you just pass it to your wife, and listen to what she says, yeah. and then you wait and just go, okay. And then you fill in the Oh, line. yeah. <laughs> That's your turn then. <laughs> Boy, Thank you. You, you learn me young. <laughs> but uh, actually, right down to it, I wouldn't say that the, can uh, the town itself helped us very much at all. Mm -hmm. Because they are not for the businessman. Mm-hmm. They're, they do everything they can to hinder the businessman. Now, yeah. when you say they, who are you referring to? The city. The city, the, the state. Yeah, okay. and all that. Okay. Their, their regulations on a lot of things. Are asinine. Yeah. yeah. I, I do know And, that. and yeah. they, they yeah. don't sit there in the real life. They sit there in an office, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And then they designate what has to be done. Well, in real life. <laughs> yeah. See, when I was, uh, this was back in 60, when did we did get the Late 60s, anyhow. I leased a, uh, the building that the, the uh, Science Center is in right now. Mm -hmm. I leased that from the from the city, mm. and to put your Cordova outboard. No, well, it was, that was, was, that was called before. Fish Recycle Center at that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was okay. Mm -hmm. That was maybe that was later than sixty because we moved off of that and moved no, into the, the eighties. So it, it was late seventies then. Yeah, because I had it. Workforce I had it about three years there, and the roof leaked. So I went to the city and I told him, I said, the roof is leaking on that, and you know, getting my stuff all wet. And he said, well, you're going to have to put a new roof on it. 
I said, I do? <laughs> I said, you own the building. Well, yeah, but you're leasing us from us, so you have to put a new roof on it. Oh, wow. my gosh. Wow. See, and then, yeah. the, then they, I moved out of there, and then they turned around and spent several thousands of dollars putting a new roof on it, new bracing on the bottom, underneath on the piling, and, mm -hmm. and all this. And to give it to these guys, see? To the science center? Yeah. But the city paid all that. They spent probably two or three hundred thousand dollars on it. And now they're kicking them out. <laughs> well, they are? Yeah, they bought, or they're going to be over by the campground, by the burn pile. Oh, really? Camp here. Well, I, yeah, I knew that they were, I knew that that was in the offing, but what I'm hearing you say is that the city is actually kicking them out of well, the building. I don't know if they're kicking them out. But they, That's they, what. Yeah, have just Wait, influenced them to move the science yeah. center. Influence they don't, they don't, yeah, they don't. Oh. Making it, they're making it difficult.